So, Bombshell is the Fox News scandal of 2016, where Roger Ailes, the head of Fox News at the time, was uh, was accused of sexual harassment uh, from a number of different women, and a number of different women came forward on the matter. Now, um, this film was written by, uh, by Charles Randolph, uh, one of the co-writers of The Big Short, and it definitely... It definitely feels like the big short in terms of uh, of trying to make an all-encompassing biopic. Like, it's trying to cover everything that went into this event. Like, it's not just covering, you know, what happened with Megyn Kelly and what happened with Gretchen Carlson and what happened with Roger Ailes. No, it's trying to cover everything within Fox News. Um, so you're going to be a little bit overwhelmed with information here. Like, they started off pretty briskly. Uh, like we get a we get a big introduction here, um, we get a big introduction um, by by one of the anchors who's informing us all about Fox News. She lets us know how the operation functions. She lets us know where the building is, you know, wh- what floors they operate on, who are the staff here, um, how does where's Roger Ailes' office, what does Roger Ailes look for, um, how are news broadcasts assembled, what's you know what what are what are you know, what are the anchors expected to wear? What are they expected to talk about on screen? Um, what goes on in the control booth? Bam, 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 bam. We're given all this information really quickly because this is like, this film is 108 minutes and it's got a lot to get to. So it's going to skim through it as quickly as possible. So this is kind of like the first five minutes are kind of like a primer saying like, look, we're going to be, we're going to be slashing through like a lot of these events, like really quickly here. So this is kind of like your primer. So, So like, if you're watching this film, you need to, you got to catch up here because there's a lot of stuff that they, they pack into this film that they won't slow down to explain. Namely the cast. Like for one, we, we do spend enough time, uh, with a few cast members that we get to know them and their plight. Like we spend enough time with Megan Kelly here, who's played by, uh, Charlize Theron, who, uh, who basically becomes a story at Fox news when she is targeted, um, uh, by Donald Trump for, you know, what she said on the air and, you know, what she says during the debates. She's called out for it and she kind of becomes like a target within Fox News. Uh, we follow Gretchen Carlson enough who is seeking to push forward um, sexual harassment charges because she knows she's been downgraded within the company um, and she knows that, you know, part of that is, you know, her appeal with Roger Ailes. Uh, we get to know Roger Ailes uh, as kind of like this 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 overweight and like slimy guy who takes way too much interest in the women that he hires and what they wear on air um and takes a lot of interest in what they put on the news at least from from the film they they showcase that he's got like the, you know this huge like vast display of televisions where he's keeping an eye on every single thing going on in the network and calls up pretty routinely to say like you know you can't do this you you mix up this you like he's v- he's very much about the micromanagement um on Fox News um, and they also reveal a little bit more of his history, too, which, again, they glaze over quickly. They're like, here's the key things you got to know about Roger Ailes before we go forward. Got it? Good. Okay, we're moving on. Next segment. <laughs> and then so we also follow um, this uh, this intern called Kayla, who is played by Margot Robbie, who sort of becomes, uh, you know, like kind of like the latest target of Roger Ailes. You know, she's one woman who wants to try to, like, work her way into the Fox News organization. She wants to be held up higher. Um, she feels like she doesn't quite fit in because um, she embarrassed herself while working on Bill O'Reilly's team. So she's trying to find like a way to move up. And so she looks to white. Well, what did the other women do? It's like, oh, well, they went to go see Roger Ailes, and they might have done something indecent uh, to move up there. Um, and so she becomes like you know, you know, one of like the latest targets, and tries to figure out a little bit more how Fox News functions. And also realize, you know, what will happen if you come forward. Like, that's the one thing I did like about this film the most is that they do focus a lot more on, you know, before, like, you know, the sexual harassment scandals come out, they do focus a lot more on what will happen if you come forward and why haven't these women come forward. Um, and mainly because, like, you could you could lose your job. Um, you could be blackballed, which is the worst thing ever. Like, you know, like, if you leave Fox News after such an event like that, you know, and, and, you know, and it's not like believe, believed, uh, that, you know, that these allegations were true. You can be blackballed, you know, you could find like nowhere else to work for. So like, and like a lot of people who work within the organization, like, uh, Kate McKinnon also plays like another fellow intern who basically says that, look, this was the only job I could get. 
I tried looking for other jobs, but once you're Fox, you know, nobody really wants to touch you. Um, so yeah, we, we touch on these various aspects here. Like also like Kate McKinnon and uh, Margot Robbie are kind of like in a, in a secret lesbian relation, relationship, which they know they, they got to keep outside of Fox News because they thought, like you know, like, you know, clearly Fox News is not going to like stand for that. So they try to keep it a secret. Uh, but here's the thing, like we follow these characters and we get to know enough of their plight. We kind of like bounce between them a little bit too quickly, I think, where we don't quite feel like the same resonance of their plight. But that's mostly because in between bouncing between these characters, we're also bouncing between everyone else within Fox News. So you will see like very small cameos by so many different figures within Fox News. You've got uh, you've got Rupert Murdoch. You've got um, who do you got? You, you got you got Neil Cavuto. You've got Sean Hannity. You've got Bill O'Reilly. You've got Chris Wallace. You've got Rupert Murdoch. Um, you've got other figures that come into play here. You've got Rudy Giuliani. You have so many people here, and so many of them are just in it for like one or two scenes. Like they they just. I swear there's like a moment where they just, they have like a quick shot of Geraldo. And he's just like, no, no, I, I, I can't be in this film. I, I, I gotta go. And of course it's played by someone else who's not Geraldo, uh, Geraldo Rivera, obviously. Um, but there's so many of these characters that cram into this film who just, who are just kind of there. And they're, they're just kind of like, they're, they're somewhat for background to like, let us know that, yeah, this is, you know, to make it a believable Fox News, like, yeah, you might see, you know, Cavuto in the hallway, you know, you might see Bill O'Reilly here, you might see Sean Hannity to the side here, but they don't really do much. I mean, there's there's a few scenes where, like, there's one scene where they have, like, a bet going on um, at the network where, like, Cavuto and Sean Hannity and Geraldo are all chatting about, like, some bet about what's going to happen at the network. It's some brief aside. It's like, that's, like, their only scene together. You won't see anything else about that. Um, we bounce around very quickly, uh, to different aspects of like the lawsuit going around Roger Ailes um, and the Trump campaign, and we also it's it's fairly nonlinear too, where we also cut back in time. Like we cut back to um, not too far back in time. We cut back to September 11th. We cut back a few years later to like another intern who tried to come forward and nothing came of that. So we do we we cover a lot of ground here for 108 minutes. That by the end of the film. I was just kind of winded. I was just kind of like, this is this is a lot to take in. Um, that 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 you know, trying to bring like greater focus into you know women coming forward in the workplace about sexual harassment, kind of almost comes off like lip service towards the end there, just because there's so much of these events that they want to cover about you know you know how like how like Gretchen tried to you know balance her home life and work and trying to, you know, fight for what was right. You know, how Megyn Kelly tried to try to come to terms with herself about, you know, not just, you know, skirting by, you know, the stuff that Trump said or the stuff that Roger Ailes has done to her. It, it feels like, I, I don't know, this is one of those films that like, um, there's a question on Twitter a while back saying like, you know, it, w what film do you feel could have been longer this year? And I feel like if Bombshell were longer and had a little bit more time to explore these characters, I think it could have been great. But as stands right now, I mean, the, the the best I can say about the film is that it's got some amazing acting in here. Like, Sh Charlize Theron and no Nicole Kidman as uh, as Gretchen Carlson is great. Charlize Theron as Megan Kelly is great. Margot Robbie as, as this intern all put in, like, these fantastic performances of people that you could believe being at Fox News. Like, they transform. Like, I kind of expected that from Charlize Theron, she's really good at just kind of like melting into a role and just like completely placing herself into the role of that character where she almost disappears. I love her in that. Um, Nicole Kidman was a little bit of a surprise. It, it, it feels like she was trying to like keep up with, with Charlize Theron uh, with trying to get in, get entrenched into her character. And I think she actually keeps up. She keeps up pretty well. Um, also got to give props to John Lithgow as uh, as Roger Ailes, um, Again, another kind of dissolving role that usually when John Lithgow appears in a film, I kind of, you know, like, like see him and have a hard time trying to distance myself from when he was in, in like, you know, Third Rock from the Sun, even though he's a little more wrinkly with age. But for Ailes, you know, he puts on like, you know, the full weight and, and, you know, like, you know, sputtering and like stumbling of, of like, you know, kind of like an overweight old man that I... He melts into the role. There's some great acting here. Even for, even for, I'll, I'll say yes, even for like the small roles here of like Richard Kind trying to play Rudy Giuliani, he does a pretty good job considering 
it could have gone so far into like parody here. I mean, Richard Kind is pretty pretty fairly known for a lot of comedic roles here, especially roles where he doesn't have to try to be too comedic. So him playing Rudy Giuliani is um, kind of teeters on that line of parody, but I think it it just balances out enough. There are some roles that I don't feel fit. Uh, there are some roles that I don't feel quite fit that I'm almost kind of glad they have like nothing to do in the film. For instance, uh, Mark Evan Jackson plays Chris Wallace. And Chris Wallace is barely in this picture at all. Like, he's really only in this film for one scene where it's like right before the debates. And uh, and she and he looks up at like Megan Kelly. He's like, oh, hi, Megan. And that's it. <laughs> that, that's 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 all it's got going for it. Um, so, I mean, uh, th this film does touch on some interesting issues, um, but it, it plays around with the style. I feel a bit too much like at one point. They mention that there are other women who were harassed by Roger Ailes. And we get to see photos of them up on screen. Um, and we transition to each photo and we hear, you know, like testimonies from each one as they go. And that's just kind of like inserted as an aside in there. Along with all the, the non-linear jumping back and forth that we we do in the film. That, um, that, I feel like the film comes off a little bit too messy. I mean, this was kind of like a little bit of a problem I had with uh, with The Big Short, which, I mean, I love The Big Short, but the, I think a problem with that film is it tr it's trying to cover so much, um, but I feel like it kind of works because, like, we get to understand how messy the system was at, uh, you know, with, like, big banking going down. Within Bombshell, I feel like... You know, you know, they're, they're putting all this in to kind of cover how busy and messy, like, you know, the whole Fox News situation is like we see we see glimpses and uh, and small examples of like, you know, how the, the work environment kind of like crumbles around the Roger Ailes scandal and how people become, uh, you know, a little scared, a, a little fervent, a little, you know, having a little bit of a desire to jump ship, a little bit of a desire to, you know, blindly support Roger Ailes. Um. And I feel like not enough of that is explored. It just feels like, it kind of almost feels like bullet points just going through like, yeah, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, and here's this huge ensemble cast. We got to play all the all the characters here. And I, I just can't help but feel like if it had a little bit more more time, we could have we could have explored this a little bit more. Because this is stuff worth exploring, and I don't feel like it's all quite here. That being said, it does have great performances, and I do kind of love the assembly of this film for, for how it kind of like darts back and forth, even though some of the themes get lost within it. I think it's got great energy. It's got some great performances by far, um, and, a, and a really great uh, uh, music video ending to this too, um, with some great art design as well. So just a, I know it's kind of like a, an aside. It's just, it's one of the aspects of the film I, I really did enjoy as well. So for Bombshell... Three out of five stars.